Escape Reviews. Cars and their proud owners. The architecture of cars is an added bonus. Classic cars, exotic cars, owners at the wheel. Exploring each car's history and the stories they reveal. Owners and their cars. Arc Escapes and Cars, yeah! Hiya! How do? This is Chris and this is our very first car review video and what a better way to start these video episodes is to review a British car and that's why I've got this hat but anyway I always wear this hat but it goes with the car okay now as you can see we're going to be looking at a TR6 a wonderful TR6 and I absolutely love these cars these cars to me are quintessential British just like me, Chris, your fellow architect friend. And you were saying, well, why is an architect, or why has an architect decided to review cars? Well, there's a lot of similarities between architecture and cars, or automobiles. And that is uh, architecture and cars both have sexy lines, or brutal lines. Uh, they're all about style, they're all about function. You know, cars here. This, the function of cars is the engine, the motor, the horsepower, the speed and everything. Houses is how you progress through the houses, where the bathrooms are, can you get to it quick enough? Um, also the kitchen, is it big enough, you know? Uh, is the interior big enough here? Just like, is the kitchen big enough to cook in? Is it big enough here to drive in? You know, a lot of similarities between architecture and cars. So that's why I decided to start this series of videos and this is episode number one on the TR6. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so what is an interesting fact about this TR6 uh, being the quintessential British car is uh, it's not all that British when you get down to it. Um, yes, it was made in Blighty or England. Uh, Blighty is the kind of slang for England, you know. Um, and uh, But it wasn't designed by an English guy. No, no it wasn't, no. In fact, it was designed by a German. Yes, a German. Yes, quite the opposite of British. And also before that, it was designed by an Italian, combining their experiences together. And in fact, on this car, it started off, uh, the cars before this, the TR4 and TR5, was designed by a guy called uh, Giovanni Michelotti, if I'm saying that right, and um, the uh, G the TR5, the TR5 uh, came before this, obviously, because this is a TR6. Numbers work that way, four, five, six. Okay, and uh, Giovanni uh, actually designed the TR4 and TR5, and the front end here was a lot different than the TR6. It had more kind of googly eyeball kind of uh, headlights, right? So it's different in its own way. And the back was slightly different, okay? And, um, and so what happened was, is once uh, the German guy got involved, who was Carmen, which is a famous car body shop out of Germany, Carmen, they made the Carmen gear. And uh, Carmen actually redesigned this car, being the front portions of the car, and the rear portions of the car. But the centre portion of the car and the body pan actually remained as Giovanni had had it in the TR5. And uh, so it's a combination of those two people. Foreigners, a German person, an Italian, that designed what we call the quintessential British car. It's kind of strange. So the results of these two people combining their talents together is the TR6. And to me, the TR6 is actually the best of all the Triumph sports cars. I just love the lines of this car. So what you've got is Giovanni Michelotti, and then uh, he is also famous for designing uh, Ferraris, and also uh, Austin Martins. And actually, in the old TR5s, okay, you can actually see some of those old Ferraris that he designed and uh, I think it was a DB2 with Aston Martin and it actually did have the uh, the kind of more bubble type um, headlight here and on this side too more the bubble type headlight 
in those original cars, the Ferrari, I think it was the uh, 225 uh, Berlinta or something like that, I think it was. I provide a picture of that uh, so you can refer to it so you can see the similarities. And I can see the genesis of this whole car looking at those old Ferraris and also the old DB2, which is very interesting. Uh, so this did have a great birth and um, out of those cars and the collaboration between Giovanni and also uh, Carmen, you get this piece of art. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the style of this car to the style of architecture that I think most complements the car. And uh, I've been looking at this car and uh, the style that I come up with is the Bauhaus movement, okay? That was started in Germany. Oh, yeah, that's right. Carmen did do some design work on this house and he was German. So it makes sense, right? Where well, the Bauhaus movement is kind of all about uh, function. It's got like a straight, sharp edges, 90 degree turns. Uh, there's no fluff on that kind of style architecture, okay? And then, so this car, there's no fluff on it. It is what it is, it's honest. It's not a pretender, okay? Um, it's not doing something it shouldn't. It's really covering the motor and it's covering where you sit. And I guess that's what the Germans are, right? They build honest cars that are too frou-frou. All right, so now what we've got to do is look for Adams. So let's see. Adams, where are you? Adams, are you in the car? Are you in the car? Are you under the car? I don't see Adams. Where could it be? Uh -oh. Adams, hey, there you are. <laughs> Hey, hey, right here, friend. How you Hello, doing? Chris, how you doing, well, buddy? And thank you, you for man. doing my very first car video. I'm very glad to be doing the very yes. first car video. And this is one of my best friends, Adams. And then I was like, Adams, can you tell us a little story about your car here, your TR6? If you will not embrace me during it, I would be glad to. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm too <laughs> touchy feeling. Oh. <laughs> so Adams, tell me a bit about your car. Well, you know, generally about these cars, I think you covered it very well early on. But the TR6 was an aspirational car back when I was in high school. Right. Because, you know, you had the little Austin Healey Sprites, you had the MG Midgets that were like entry level. Yes. Then you had the MGBs, which were a little step up, and then it was the TR6. And the Austin Healey 3000, though it would have been elder than this, it was still a very muscular, brawny right. car. And you had a Spitfire in that, which was designed yeah. by the same guy that exactly. designed this car, right? There you go, good, yeah. good pick. Yeah. And of course, that was a more diminutive little car. Yes, even for someone smaller, my, smaller than this. For somebody my size, I always felt cramped in the GT6 or the Spitfire right. or the Sprites. But this car, this was a car to have. Yes. And so that was my early attraction. I had a bunch of them when I was in college. And then I probably spent 30 years or more not having one until I saw it in the Winn-Dixie parking lot down here. Wow. Left a note on the windshield. Well, that's a great little story right there. And that's how you acquired this car. Exactly. So you actually saw this car in Winn-Dixie, which is a local uh, grocery store uh, in America, if you're watching from across seas, okay, uh, Winn-Dixie. Um, and he's apparently you saw, a note was on this car. Yeah. Or, it, or did you put the note on the car? I it? did. So and you put the note on the car? I did. It was mainly the color that attracted me. The car was pretty dingy. It had been under a tree for right. years. Right, yeah. Really, it didn't yeah. look quite like this. Yes. But I left a note and many, many weeks later, I'd basically forgotten about it. The gentleman called me back and I figured it was probably a kid who owned it ended up being an 82-year-old British guy who'd owned it for over 20 an years. An 82-year-old British guy. Yeah, and he loved it, but he just was getting of age. So he, he it's only had one owner? Uh, he was actually the third owner. He was a third owner. And I'm the fourth. You're the fourth owner? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So how long did he have it for? He had it 22 years. So he had it for a very, very long time. A very long time. He bought it in the state of Florida, uh, but he lived in Atlanta, and he had it trucked back up to him, but when he moved, now he currently lives in right, Florida. Right, right. He drove this car from Atlanta to Florida when he moved down here about five Florida. years ago. And it made the trip. And it made the trip. Yes. Yeah. Have you taken any long trips in this car? I would not be brave enough to You're do not it. brave enough. <laughs> you know, and it's really not because of it, you know, we all have these jokes about British unreliability. Yes. These cars yeah. are extremely sturdy and durable. Yes. These are not unreliable cars. Yes. But it's just a little, small and you know and other traffic is way faster that's why i wouldn't take it yeah yes yeah, obviously we take on the freeway this is going to be kind of scary to drive a little bit but because it's so simple and the engine is so simple 
it's just uh, there's nothing really that could go wrong that you couldn't fix yourself, right? It's, exactly, and that's a, to me the beauty of British cars is their yes. their complexity may be down, which is in some ways not a great thing. But honestly, for the home mechanic, yeah, it's incredible. This car has three fuses in it. Three, three. Only, three. only three, three fuses. Yes. Oh, that's yes. incredible. Yes. Yeah, I've got three fuses in this for the seat heaters. Yes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I absolutely love this car, Adam. So, I do. I do too, Chris. So I mean, the lines on this car are just spectacular. They, they you know, like I said, not too much foo foo on it. It's got this wonderful straight line here that's carried from the front all the way to the back right here. And uh, I, like, I like the way the wheels sit in the wheel well. There's not too much space here. Yep. It sits absolutely perfect. Um, Chris, just you're, you're, everything about it, I you love. Know, you, you mentioned something that a lot of like car guys who are maybe not, who are certainly not architects and certainly not of a designerly yeah. background. Yes, years, yeah. But most everyone, male, female, young, old, mentions the size of the tires. Yes. And something about the proportion of the tires to the scale of the car, it just looks beefy and it looks muscular. Yeah, that's what I like is, is, is this tire today, people go, oh no, I want little, little one inch tires and big, big huge uh, rims you yeah, know yeah and actually i actually prefer the old style we have more tire yeah. and smaller rims way bigger profile you and know? it just fills out the wheel well and just an almost non-existent overhang here just has an aggressive look but these were a lot larger because they probably didn't have a technology kind of cushion the suspension and everything so this took up a lot of that cushion right here and that's probably why they were larger than they are today but i really love this look and, and the spacing it absolutely perfect. Yep, and you know, a lot of people look at this and they go, wow, look at the size of that tire. Yes. And what they're really looking at is what you mentioned is the proportion of the size to the car because this is only a 15 inch tire. Yes. Which would look like a toy on Fif a modern car. 15 inch, that's yeah. not big. <laughs> no. no, it's not. I mean, the car next to it's got 19s and they yes. don't, it doesn't look any, 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 yes. any smaller than that. And I do love how this flares out. You know, it's got it's a wonderful little, flare. Little love bit. it. Yep, and the, this belt line, like you'd mentioned, runs all the way down the car. It just, I don't know, it's a, it's a decently dramatic it's style. It's all in the details. Yep. Just like I said, this little ridge that runs across here, how this flares over the wheel, and the spacing of this. You know, if it was bigger, it wouldn't look as good, but it fits with this style tire. And also, talk to me about the stylings of this uh, this hub here, because this is so darn simple. Yep. What does it remind you of? Uh, um, a tractor or, or, or a, a, a dryer, maybe some uh, uh, it, washing machine. Yeah, it reminds, is that where you're it, going with yeah, it? Yeah, it reminds me of, these cars always reminded me of the, the, the drums in a dryer in your household appliance. And that's what I'm saying. This car is just so brutally honest. You know, I said, why not? Let's just, oh. Look, probably looking inside his dryer and said, oh, that would make a good hub for my car. You know, and that's what this looks like. It looks like a dryer hub to me. There's not, there's no spokes or anything. It is purely what it is. And you can, you could have gotten this car optionally with wire wheels, which were sort of out of vogue. They were sort of like tailing out yes. in those years. But the steel wheel, the steel, which is all they call it, is a styled steel wheel. Right. Is so darn plain, but I think so handsome. Yes. I love the, the big thick rim. Yes. Uh, this is just a beauty ring. It would be like a, a hubcap would be on an American car. Yes, almost. yes. Just a center cap and the ring. But this ring has got such an inset, it gives the illusion of a much wider rim. Oh yeah, because of the chamfer on this. Yeah. Chamfer is also an architecture term, by the way, of, cu of cutting the corners of columns. But the chamfer, yes, it makes this rim actually look bigger than what it is because the light also shines off it and that mm -hmm. makes it look bigger too. And I love this TR6 logo in the oh, middle here. I love it too, and that's really the only color on it. Now, uh, TR6s are famous, or however the, the tire is actually famous, yes. where Michelin made a tire that was a red line, and it was... Uh, a red, you mean a red line that exactly. goes around here? Yes. yes, I've seen the red line tires. And it's almost exclusively on TR6s, but it really wow. offsets that color and just looks beautiful. I, I think it would clash a little bit with the green, but it is a handsome well, I don't look. know. I think you should get a paintbrush, Adams, and paint between the line right here with steady hands because Adams is also a very good artist. So I think he can stay within some lines here and put a nice red line around this if he wanted to. Yeah, there's my next project. Thank you. There's your next yeah. project. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Well, if you haven't guessed it, we're at the rear of the TR6. And uh, the TR6 has a very distinctive uh, rear end. 
apart from apart from mine. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, and what I love about it, it's not afraid to show the British flag. There you go, TR6 with a British flag. Uh, I, I just love that about these cars. Just not afraid to show that they're made in Britain. They might have to have a little German flag up here, an Italian flag though too, because if they want to be really honest, that you know, it was designed by, a British, uh, by an Italian and a German guy. Uh, but anyway, made in England by Leyland. Uh, but what I love about this car is I also love how the tail lights here actually wrap around the back here, okay? And uh, this is just wonderful styling and it pulls into the British flag here too. But Adams, tell me a little bit about uh, the, the back of this car because there are some distinctive features that people might go, hmm, why is it that black? Exactly, well, and that is a, a, a great question and I've gotten it before and I questioned it. When I first looked at this car, I thought, well, surely it's been repainted, which is, you know, often a telltale sign when somebody does body color back here because all TR6s, quote unquote, all TR6s, were done in sort of a matte black finish back here, mm -hmm. which was sort of in vogue at the time, you know, yes. the blackout thing. Yeah, matte black. Matte black, matte exactly, black. or maybe a satin. But mm -hmm. this one uh, is not, and to, to any evidence I can find, I don't want to start a controversy online, or maybe maybe we do, I can find no evidence. Controversy is good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then, <laughs> then, I, then as a matter of fact, I do want to start a controversy. But In fact, uh, talk about it in the comment section. There you go. I can find no evidence of any black paint ever. I cannot find any no? evidence of no. any repaint, none, zero. I, I think it came from the factory like that. W w we don't know. There are rumors of people who worked yeah. um, at Triumph at the time, right. and they said, yeah, a few cars were loaded up on the boat that did not have the black paint. Mm. You know, people were getting a little bit lazy by the time this was being built, and they had right. all kind of labor problems yes. and all sorts of difficulties, and so the workers what, were in England. Warm. Labor problems in England? That's the rumor. That's, that's the rumor. Yeah, that's. What I would we have hear. never thought. Yeah, who would have? <laughs> 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 so there are these stories that circulate that there may be a few that sort of escaped unpainted. Whether or not it was, who, who's yeah. who's to say? But I can find zero evidence of even the green even being repainted. So. Yeah. And you mentioned, and you, and you pick up on all these incredible things, which I'm not surprised, that this, this rear wing would have been originally, or fender to the US, but this rear wing would have had a vertical lamp here housed within sort of an implied um, fin, which yes. was also very in vogue. Yes. And how bold of Carmen to make this go sideways and then tuck this little gentle looking overhang spoiler back in here, which I just think Such is Such a wonderful neat. little touch. Exactly, so masterful. Yes, yep. I love that. And uh, tell me, um, what year uh, is this car? Because you know, they started in 1969, they made them in 69 until about 1976. Yeah. And uh, so what year is yours? This is a very late car, so it's uh, March yes. of 1976. And the reason why I'm getting at that is because of these uh, the you rub love rubber bumpers, which I absolutely you love, love these <laughs> rubber bumpers. I think they add to the styling of the car. <laughs> So tell me why. Can we the put the European... sarcasm emoji right in here? Yeah, we'll okay. put the sarcasm emoji, we'll put some kind of emoji in here. But um, the reason why they have these bumpers, they never had these in Europe. So why did they put these on in America? Well, this was the American thing. They were, we were trying to achieve a five mile per hour crash standard yep, to, to not wreck the car. If you hit some, yes. something at five miles an hour, I don't remember what the, the, the line or the limit was, but it couldn't cause more than X dollars of body damage. That yes. was, you know, thank you federal government. So we got these huge, what they're called Nordell, that's who made them overriders front and rear. Right. And they are weighty. Do you have any plans to take those off and take it back to what it should be? None whatsoever, because I do like them. Well, let me get a screwdriver and I'll come at night and I'll take these horrible things off because I love the car. This is the only thing I don't like. Well, but I'm European, Ameri uh, you know, Adams is American, so he's going with the American rubber bumper, so he's got the bumper car here. But uh, I would personally take these off. But it's Adams' car. You know, and it probably would, in all honesty, clean up the lines and save probably 50 pounds front and rear. Yes, yes. You know, it's, it's and that would make you go, what, two miles per hour faster? Uh, downhill. Downhill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Adams, shall we look to see what's under the bonnet? I hope something is under the bonnet. I hope there's a motor. Let's check it out. Yes. Oh, that looks so cool. It's so clean. You keep it in really good condition. Well, Adams, this is a beauty of a motor. And I can already tell that this is an inline six, 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Good job. So it's in line, which is actually better than if they're side by side because it adds more power. Um, but what a clean engine, Adams. Can you tell me a little bit more about the engine? Well, thank you for saying it's clean. It's really just original. I mean, this has never been redone. Um, the motor may have been pulled at some point in its history, but it's never been repainted. Uh, I just cleaned it. I just did as much detailing as I could, but leaving it sort of intact. Um, so this is a, a two and a half liter inline six. Two and a half liter, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's really where, you know, they had the, like we were saying, the TR4, which were four cylinders in the, uh, the TR, Five was only a, 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 a European version. We didn't, right, did, right. America did not get those, and that was an inline six that was fuel injected, or as you folks say, petrol injected. Yeah, yeah. And it was good for about 150 horsepower, but these were strangled down a little bit. Thank you, American. To so about 110 horsepower, about right? 110. About 110. And that's, and that's a bit with the, optimistic. That's with the uh, American. Unfortunately, when they were come over here, they uh, had reduced horsepower. Uh, than the European ones, um, cut down by about 30, 30 horsepower, 30, 35 horsepower. Yeah, right? and it's and, and these are great carburetors. These are Stromberg, uh, dual Stromberg 175s, yes. uh, which, which mm -hmm. are great carburetors, but they did, they pulled the power down, but they had to, to run more efficiently. And this is a later piece, if you can still see it in the camera, which is a, um, an air injection pump uh, that was, I don't remember the year, maybe 74 it was introduced and it dropped the power a little bit more. So this is one of the things that are responsible for lowering your horsepower. Correct. Along with these, right? Because it was belt driven and that dragged down a little bit of right. power. Right, yeah. But you know, the cool thing about these and anybody who's ever driven these yeah. would, would agree, the sound, the feel when oh, you're in the driver's seat. wonderful sound. We'll you, see that soon. And you feel like you're going faster. It, you'll never be yes. tricking yourself to thinking, hey, I'm in a fast car, but you have a sensation of speed that, you know, who cares what the In other words, you'll be going like 40 miles per hour and it seems like you're going 80 miles per hour. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a little go-kart. It drives like a go-kart. Very right? much, very much. It's a lot of that feel, very yes. tactile. Yes. It's, it's all about the experience, so it's not really the horsepower, you know, it's not like you're going to brag about, oh, mine has this horsepower. You're going to brag about how this actually handles and how much fun it is. It's all about having fun, isn't it? You know, that is, that's the word. Fun. These are fun cars. They're yes. super approachable cars. Like yes. we said earlier, they're very fixable cars. Yes, and it seems like a very simple motor to work on. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. there's none of this computer system on like having modern day cars. Yeah, like I mentioned, there are my three fuses out of yep. the camera range, but that's yep. it. Yeah, you know? and uh, another thing I noticed on this, and did you replace the hoses because these hoses here are green to match the color of your car. Well, somebody was thinking. Well, that was you, right? I, I did replace the hoses. Actually, yes. I had a guy do that and went through the whole cooling system. But that funny oddball lizard green is correct for Triumph. That so, so did they actually come with this they lizard can't. green? Yes, that crazy green. That is crazy. Yep. I yep. love this color because it just pulls together everything with the car. It does. It's it's it it's, does. Sort of, it's a TR6 thing. Now, of course, you yes. get them in black, but the, I like the I like the green. Yes. Well, it looks absolutely fantastic, Adams. Well, this you. motor does, and I can't wait to hear it. Well, let's do that, shall we? Well, I'll tell you what. Before we do that, we need to check the boot. The boot. The and boot. It's not on your foot. You mean the boot? It's not a trunk, Adams, because that's something you take on tr when you're traveling. Okay. Of course you do. Right. We yeah. take to the airport a bit, or you take on an old ship like the Titanic. Ooh. And uh, no, it's called. The, the boot. boot. Do you want me to shut the bonnet first? Yes, we can shut the bonnet, and this is not the hood, because that's something you wear on your head. So let's shut the bonnet. Oh, shall we? Okay. Yes. Fantastic, Adam. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, man. You got smudges on my boot. I know. You got dude. smudges on my smudges boot. Smudges on the boot. You can't have smudges. Wipe your smudges off the boot. Yeah. Get it all ready for those folks on the camera. Okay. So Adams. Yes. What I love about this rear end, <laughs> your rear end on the TR6. Thank you very right? much. Just to kind of. Just, I feel special. Okay. okay. Is it's really dead flat. <laughs> Correct. It's flat as a pancake. Yeah. You know, normally. Uh, you know, your, your boots are normally got some kind of curve to it, you know, but look at this line, just wonderfully straight. Very Bauhaus, what you say? Very Bauhaus. Very Bauhaus. And tell me a little bit about this gas. I guess this is where you put the gas in, right? That's where you put the gas, and it's a um, what they would call the Le Mans filler cap. 
and it was just for quick release like in races. Is that why they call it Le Mans? It's for the quick release. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you wouldn't you wouldn't be losing your cap, you know, in a race, which is a bad thing. So there's to do. no unscrewing to no do. No unscrewing. This is a very trusting public. You didn't have to unlock it or leave it behind. Absolutely the love it. But but this is a wonderful touch that was used on a few cars, Cobras, etc. Cobras? Mm -hmm. co and Cobra was based upon an English car, wasn't it? The AC. The AC. Correct. So he actually, even though it was a Ford engine and it was a Ford race car, it was based upon a British car called the AC. Very And nice. they had a similar kind of filling cap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A just, lot of these British cars actually shared a lot of similar items because British Leyland weren't afraid to reuse parts from different cars. No, uh, that was one thing they were not afraid to use. Uh, uh, tell me why you like the uh, keeping the window down at the back here. Well, you know, these cars were not really, uh, even if they were equipped with air conditioning, which this one is not, it was not very effective. And I actually like when that window is zipped out and right. you're driving, you just sort of get a flow through. It's like being on a sailboat. Right. You get yeah. a lot of air, but yeah. you don't get the, the, the beating down sun yeah. Excellent. of the top. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, you do know, Adam, it's a sin to keep the top up when you're driving this car. You've got to put the top down. I'm, oddly enough, I'm not a convertible guy. You're not a convertible guy, not a convertible but he's got a convertible. So there you, there you go. So let's look inside your boot. Let's look inside my, my almost flat boot. Let's see how much storage space we got in this thing. Actually, well, I'm surprised. It's not this bad. It's large. It's not bad. Shockingly, it has a oh, real. Oh, got the spare tire yeah, in the red. Oh, and you know what? It does have the red striping. Yeah. You yep. know, I love that. I think it goes well with the green, Adams. Yeah, well, if you are the master of style and taste, so if you like it, if I replace these tires, I'll get red lines. I think they'll Just look, because it will look super cool with red lines with this color green. In fact, what color green is this called? This is called Java green. Which Java we, green. Which we think of Java like coffee, but actually when you see the bean growing, yes. it's got that little green color, and this is Java green. So in the beginnings of the growing of the bean, it's actually a green color. Exactly. Yeah. See, I would have called this an apple green. I always thought this was called apple green. Well, and I, I, if it were called apple green, I wouldn't argue with it, because yeah. I mean, it, it looks like that looks color. looks like an apple. Yep. And yes. This, and most people remark, when they see this car, they remark on, what color is that? Yes. You know? Yes. So, and then when you say Java, they go, this doesn't look like coffee to me. Uh, yeah. 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 It needs a different name. In interesting color name. Interesting yeah, color name. I did not know that. That's great. Um, so very nice boot you got there, Adams. Well, thank you. I'm glad so you let's close like the boot, boot up. Okay. Yeah, I love your boot, Adams. Okay. So let's close it up. And then let's take this thing out of the garage. And then uh, let's take it for a ride. Um, for that. Adams, I love riding in your TR6. It's a great ride, you, and you've made the right call on putting the top down, I have to admit. I made him put the top down. He wasn't going to do it, but it's a sin not to put the top down on these old British roadsters. And what a nice road to drive down, 38, isn't well, it? It is, and plus, uh, since I put the top down, there's less rattles. There's less rattles with the top down. Hey, another plus. But I love it. It rides just like a go-kart. Feels great. Europeans enjoying their little fritters and their cappuccinos. So tell me about the gauges, Adams. Well, most notably, they actually work. <laughs> Check it out. 
the oil pressure is very, very enviable. Yes. The fuel, I mean, that, that's just good oil pressure in a 45 year old car that's not been rebuilt. That's pretty stout. Right. Uh, the temperature gauge is less braggable, but we were just going three miles an hour behind the golf cart that wouldn't get out of the way, but I'm not bitter about it. Voltage, putting out just exactly where you want, about 13.8. Oh, good. Look, everything works. It's a miracle. So for a little tip for anybody who wants their British electronics to work, it's the grounds. I don't mean the coffee grounds, but like the ground and the positive. Just clean the grounds. Half that stuff will come back to life. So let's take Adam's TR6 for a spin. Oh, right now, you can already tell, I love the exhaust notes. Fantastic exhaust notes. I love the way this drives, it's just like a go-kart. So smooth. I mean, it literally does feel like you're in a go-kart. Absolutely, oh, round roundabout? Hey, here's something English right here. We go roundabout. Let's go round the roundabout a couple of times. Woo! Yeah, this thing handles super. Look at that. It turns on a dime, these cars. Such fun to drive. I've got to get one of these myself. Absolutely love it. So, one thing I noticed shifting this car is that the shifter's actually pretty smooth. Um, it goes into gear great. The steering is just so tight just literally hugs the corners. Just handling the curves, it just, it just hugs them. It's, you, you become part of this machine. It's not like the modern cars of today. You literally become part of the machine and uh, you feel like you're part of the road. And that's what I like about these old cars. It's just so visceral. Uh, you just become at one with them. Just absolutely fun to drive. Fun to drive. Yes, yes. Great roads to drive on too, nice and tristy. And they have roundabouts, they have roundabouts. So it feels like I'm back in England in this British sports car, this icon, this icon, this TR6. Well, that was a wonderful drive in this beautiful weather, in this legend of a British sports car, the TR6. And uh, after talking to Adams, and driving this car, I give this a two thumbs up. Absolutely love one of these. Um, I would like to buy one of these. They're just so much fun. Hugging the road, driving it. It almost seems like a, one of those old go-kart rides, you know, at Disney World or something. It's, it's, just, it's just an awesome car. There's no doubt about it. The TR6. And for all you collectors or wannabe collectors, this is actually a good first car to collect. They are very affordable still, they're fun to drive, and you know what, wherever you drive, you get waves, you get smiles, and it's a good way to meet new people too. So I highly recommend this car, absolutely awesome. 
once again, two thumbs up. So that's it for me. So I'll say bye. Oh, <sighs>